Well, thank you. <coughs> thank you very much uh, to the members of the uh, press. I wanted to discuss a few issues with you. And this is with respect to the meetings that are taken place this morning. The presidential statements on uh, Sudan and South Sudan. What I did in the council was first to reconfirm our commitment at the Republic of South Sudan that we are committed to the negotiations that is taking place in Addis Ababa. Our team have arrived yesterday. They are now in Addis Ababa. And that we are ready to negotiate in good faith. But Sudan has not been negotiating in good faith. They unilaterally decided to steal our oil and at the same time to prevent the buyers to come and collect their uh, oil shipments from Port Sudan which led to a decision of the Republic of South Sudan to shut down the oil production. Second point is that we are committed to two viable states that can live side by side in peace. However, the behavior of Sudan is really distracting all the efforts that we have been given. First, we also sign a non-aggression fact in Addis Ababa, a security agreement which can govern our borders. That it was signed on the 10th of February. Sudan decided to violate that agreement on the 13th of February 2012 by bumping our areas in Western Barakazal and Unity State. A few days after that, they also bombed Upper Nile State. That is a bad behavior. This is not what we are expecting from a country in which we would want to have a good relationship with. Sudan had also decided to unfairly accuse us of supporting the rebels or the opposition that are fighting the government of Sudan. I told the councils once again that we are not supporting any opposition. Our policy of non-interference with the internal affairs of any country is there. So we have not been supporting the rebels that are fighting them in Darfur or the opposition in South Kordofan and Bulunai. But Sudan has been accusing us coming to the Security Council that the South is supporting the opposition. I don't understand why Sudan should be coming to the Security Council when they don't also uh, abide with the commitments that they have made. The, why would the Security Council be good to them when they are not also good with other international organizations? So, this behavior of Sudan has escalated badly. Recently, they have bombed our oil fields in Unity State. It was on record and on the news. So, these are the things that I uh, discussed in the Council this morning. I also express our concern of the situation uh, in uh, South Kordofan and Bluna, the humanitarian situation. As a Republic of South Sudan, we have been extending our hands to help the refugees that have crossed our border. Numerous times, Sudan has been targeting them in our territory, which is also a violation 
of international law. Second is about the citizenship issue, the nationality. Our citizens that are living in Sudan wanted to come to the south. Sudan has given some conditions by restricting the movement of these people from coming to the south. They have given a condition of only three routes to be used by these people that wanted to come to South Sudan. First, they wanted them to use the train from Sudan, then to Awil, Awil to Wau. Second, they wanted these people to also use the routes of going through by cars, going through uh, unity states. And then the third was by air. This is the condition. They are restricting them from using boats on the river. So they choose the expensive routes and at the same time risky because there are landmines on those areas. This is a violation of human rights. You cannot only accept somebody to use a route that is unsafe. This is wrong. We have also uh, expressed the fact that the Security Council should, by any means, can condemn and also urge Sudan to fulfill commitment that they have agreed to do. So these are the things that uh, I have discussed. And uh, I am willing to take any questions, and I thank you very much. Sure. I wanted to ask you the same thing I asked uh, Ambassador Defala, which is, what's your understanding of that, that, that Tabu and Becky briefing? It seems like, I mean, at least just to me, this sounds like a different statement than, than in the past, that it's more, even the UK sent out a press release saying we call on Sudan and South Sudan. I'm not saying it's balanced. I'm just saying it mentions both parties in every paragraph. Do you, what do you think of that panel? Do you think it gave it an accurate view of, of the of, of the, of the uh, state of negotiations between the parties, or do you think it gave an inaccurate view? Well, I think it was, it was also important that Mbeki came to brief the council, because it is very important that the, the African Union high-level implementation panel could be supported by the Security Council. That is very important. However, I do disagree with some of the views the views and the feeling that I have seen here do not reflect us as the Republic of South Sudan. We are not an obstacle to the negotiation in Addis. We have clearly given proposals that are in line with international standards, the transit fees. We have given studies that have also been done by international financial organizations the IMF. So we think our proposal affairs are good and if we, we, we do any, any financial dealing, all this could be in line with international practice. That is why we have said in Hadith that we are ready to pay a transit five, uh, fees of 69 cents per barrel. Sudan insists of 36 cents, I mean 36 dollars per barrel. From where have this been a practice? You could not find it anywhere. And if it comes to resources, the Republic of South Sudan is the one that needs the resources most than Sudan. So why should they demand more uh, or your uh, transit fees than what is being paid by several countries that have the same situation uh, like us.
So this is where the disagreement comes. Because we think $36 per barrel is not acceptable. How long would it take to have to find a different route to, to, to export your oil, not through Sudan? We are exploring other options. That is why you have heard in the news recently that we have signed a memorandum of understanding with Canada.